My name's Jeb, and I'm live. What a great night. I've got a cool opening for you guys. Something different. Hey, look at that. Familiar names in here. Thanks for coming, folks. So I got another box to open. From our friends at Sansi. I've done several grow light reviews for them, so they're a big supporter of the channel, obviously. Full disclosure, they're a sponsor. What they got what kind of light do you guys think this is? Any, see the size? Any guesses here? <laughs> All right. Here it comes. Oh. Was it upside down? No, we got it. So this is their security light they're putting out. Obviously, I haven't used this before. This is brand new for me. I can't tell you it's awesome. Um, I can just tell you it's it's probably awesome. Just based on their history. Pull some of this stuff out of here. Someone says fluorescent. No, it's an LED. Okay, so here's the here's the thing here's the thing with Sansi. I work I've I've worked with several grow light manufacturers, and all the stuff I've gotten uh, from them has worked well. I made some errors with some of them. Obviously, I stuffed a, a thirty watt LED bulb in a five gallon bucket. It's a little too big for that use, but everything's worked well. Everything's been high quality. It's like heavy, you know, let's see. This one felt light though. Maybe you want that when you've got a, a fixture, you got a mount on the wall. The other thing they don't do is the wattage, the wattage scam. I mean the wattage, uh, the wattage equivalency. But yeah, here's the light. I thought this was just going to be a floodlight with a, a motion sensor. Let's see if I can break this thing on the air. Oh, it's got these cool things. But yeah, it's actually one of these smart cams. I think I've got it upside down. Right? I thought it was just, you know, they turn on when they sense motion. No, this thing's got the whole uh, camera, and you talk to the person, and you, you record video. It even has built-in storage. You don't have to add an SD card. I think it's got what? I think 16 gigs of RAM. Anyways, they don't do the wattage nonsense. Like some some lighting folks uh, feel it necessary to equivalentize. You know, this thing is like a 300. It, it pulls 60 watts, but it's a 300. It's like, just tell me the wattage. All the Sansi products, they just tell you the wattage. This thing is what? 36 watts. Where does it say on here? I think I read it said, yeah, 36 watts. Which you may think is not a lot, but man, the floodlights scald your eyeballs. The other thing is all their lights are obviously extremely bright. I didn't damage my eyes on a Sansi bulb, but I could have. But the main thing is... All right, check this out. So you you have to get this one installed. You have to be an electrician or know what you're doing. You put it into a junction box. But that's good because it's just like a, you know, a lighting fixture on the outside of your house. They don't do the shady stuff. So another grow light manufacturer, not to be named, they wanted an Amazon review. And I was like, oh, whatever, I guess. So I hadn't agreed to it. And they said, here's the directions for an Amazon review. Okay, buy, buy the light and then give us the code. And then we'll give you a 99% discount so that Amazon can't tell that you got it for free. Then before you buy it, click around on the, on the competition. So it doesn't look curious that you just bought the first one you got. And then you do a review so it looks like you are a regular customer. 
Sansi doesn't play that way. No, I don't know. At least not with me. So anyways, I don't know if we'll have a, a video on this light. But, you know, I thought it was just going to turn on and blind the uh, blind the intruders. No, this has got video and everything. They got a phone app. You know, like all the cool companies are doing. So that's awesome. Let's see if we got any good uh, Jebtrician. Yeah, I'm not an electrician. Uh, in my next video, I probably do some uh, do some wiring. I'll have to warn people. <laughs> All right, so there'll be a link in the description if you want to get the details. I won't spend a lot of time talking because I haven't used it yet. I mean, what can I say? Except, you know, it's from a good company. I want to talk about unless who's got a good topic that is better than my topic. Let's have a topic contest. All right, here's your chance. All right, Alex Weiner says, "Are LEDs good?" All right, mushrooms, pizza toppings. Okay, my topic's better. That was easy. Oh yeah. Okay, so I got a lot of comments on this one. I, if you haven't seen the new video, I'm pretty sure if you're here, you've seen it. It's a stealth brute bucket endeavor. And this is my this is my famous design. So I got some comments on this. Okay, the biggest one was does what do you, what do you guys think? Do you need a quick overview of this? Someone says, why the filter? It, it's, it's for growing a plant in secret. Not illegally. Don't want anyone to break the law. But maybe, you know, maybe you just want a surprise for your loved ones. If you want a plant to be secret, you know, you could sneak it outdoors. But if you grow it in the bucket, if the bucket is quiet and has filtration... Then you put it in the back room where it isn't seen because it looks like a, a space engine. So the filters for smells. Is that, I mean, that's obvious. It doesn't have to be, you know, the plant you're thinking of. Maybe you just you're annoyed by smells. People said, oh, here we go. J. Hale SLC. Explain the picture through interpretive dance. I, I thought you were just going to say do a quick overview of the picture. Very disappointed. I assume you all saw it. People said the filter would not work. Okay. I, you know, I ran out of room. The filter's in the lid and the air pushes in. I think that's called positive pressure. And I think negative pressure would be where you suck the air out, right? And then so it'd be intaking through the holes. With And positive pressures might be riskier. So people are saying, well, if you blow air in, Maybe some air will come out of the uh, temperature controller hole. This doubles as the power, so I mean you have to have a hole anyway. Or maybe air will escape through the lid. But the thing with the brute bucket is surprisingly airtight lid, especially with the with the air pressure from below. So yeah, some and and someone in the last feed got very uh, excited because I was saying how. How do we do this thing and how do we do it quiet? Because the turbine fans that people put on here are not quiet. I, I don't, well, okay, maybe they are now. So the thing with the filter is if the air only comes through the filter, then it, then it will work. The only issue would be if air is escaping and air, air isn't escaping because I tested it with fish fertilizer. And so inside the room, it smelled completely normal. If you stuck your nose right up to the air filter and took a big old whiff, it was completely clean, but you could smell the moisture in the air. Then you pop the lid open. Fish fertilizer bonanza. So it did work. Who's got experience with, uh, with space buckets? For uh, for legal plants only, of course. 
Salamander Velox says, what do worm castings do? Uh, it's, it's fertilizer for, for the plants. Wallflower Power says, hi, Jeb, love your videos. So entertaining. Well, thank you, Wallflower Power. Who who else has a who who else has a criticism of this design? I'm not saying it's perfect. See if I can get it here where I can still see the screen. All right. Oh, we'll freak the camera out and get it out of focus. Who who thinks there's an issue with this? The issue, the other issue, other than the uh, using using positive pressure, which I guess is risky. Okay, but here's the thing. Okay, so say you're going to use negative pressure. So then you could put your filter inside the can and then you could have your fans here at your exit or it even could be in the wall. You know, you could, I don't know, you could put the filter down at the bottom or, or wherever and it would be sucking air out of the out of the can. I don't know that these computer fans would have the torque to, to do good suction. See, that's that's the issue is if the airflow is weak, you won't get negative pressure, but you can force it <clears throat> because if, if all the fans are pushing in, even if they push just a little, the air will come out the filter. Anyways, the other weakness is mounting the light. I mounted it from the lid and I, someone said, you know, put supports in, like you could just smash a PVC through the side of the trash can and then just, you know, just rest the light on it then you can pick it up and get to the plant easy. But I didn't want to put extra holes in the bucket. Um, I would, I would mount the light if it was a, if it was a big light like this, I would mount, I would have like a rack or something that it would just rest on. Oh, and I guess what the, uh, who, who are the boys trailer park boys? Some, some other big channel did a, did a bucket. Okay, well, I didn't copy them. <laughs> I'm sure our designs are different. People said, uh, you should use blah, blah, blah light. It'd be m less wattage and much better. Well, the light's an expensive part of the, the system. So if you have an existing light you can use, you, you can accommodate it. You lose a little vertical clearance from the thick grow light. I know those, I think you could do it with less watts. Maybe 50 watts would be better. But you know, I had this light. Besides, you gotta have a challenge. Okay, Travis O'Hare says, Jeb and Trailer Park Boys meet up. Yeah, I, I don't know about their channel. What's their, is their channel, you know? Is it wholesome? <laughs> is, is it similar? Similar to mine. Evil Intestine says, what spider code do you have? Yeah, it's a dragonfly. But I think you knew that. But lots of troll comments on the trash on the trash can video. So I don't know if that if that says something about the audience that, that prefers that type. Maybe it's just because it got lots of views. Salamander Vlogs, it's a TV show, Jeb. You mean the uh, the trailer park, the trailer park gang, or whatever. <laughs> Stalker says is full strength beer. Yeah, this is Sierra Nevada, something torpedo ale or whatever. Drink responsibly. Nick Corbin says, ever think about brewing beer? Absolutely. I uh, I wanted a free beer kit, though. And I think I, I, I propositioned like four companies a while back. Here in Southern California, uh, making beer would be a winter thing. Because unless your garage is climate controlled, you, it just wouldn't work out. You have to bring it inside the house. But yeah, I, I, I propositioned four companies and I think all but one of them didn't reply. Which I don't know if I could blame them at the time, you know. 
who wants who wants to be involved with the madness? Maybe I'll try again. Nick Bellick says, please notice me. You've been noticed, Nick. Extinction is forever, says, makes beer in Southern California year-round. Uh, I mean, is it indoors, though? I mean, you have to climate control. Like, my garage might be 120 degrees for, for a lot of the, the day in, in the heat of summer. So how, how does that work for you? Josh Ketchum says, Trailer Park Boys are great, yes, but no, Jeb, you don't want to associate your channel with them. Are, are they bad? Do they do pranks? Like, what's the deal with them? Why don't, why don't I want to be associated with the Trailer Park Boys? Ricky Martin, YT, how do you combat root rot? I'm using Hydro Guard, and it's helping, but wondering how you deal with it. Well, I have a lot of plants die, so maybe you don't want advice from me. But root, roots only rot when they die. And roots usually die when they don't have enough air. So that's how you combat root rot. Jeb, have you seen Serpa Designs, Norton Snail? I've never heard of that. Is it cool? Do you check the pH of your water from Katie Sweeney? I haven't done that in, in many years. But uh, I, I, I probably should. It's not that hard. And if, you know, if you have problems... Trailer Park Boys are not kid-friendly. Okay, is my channel kid-friendly? I have a beer in my hand. I want the channel to be friendly, right? Can We, we can accept everybody as long as they're friendly. Stalker says, can you grow tobacco legally? Uh, I don't know. I think they make it hard to grow tobacco, like the protectionist. Uh, like, I think in California, it's illegal to grow cotton. I don't know. I think I just heard that. But I know in some areas, the, the cash crops, they uh, you need a license to do it because they don't want people keeping the pest. That's the theory. I don't want the gardeners keeping the pests going. Stupid. Uh, and... I might do tobacco sometime. I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't smoke it, but you can make bug spray out of it. I hear. Ooh, Andrea W got a super chat. What made you start gardening? My wife gave me some garden stuff as a, as a, as a birthday or Christmas present. I think, or she just told me to go to go garden. So I had two little wooden boxes with with four different kinds of herbs, and and they just didn't they weren't in the sun. And I had a, a topsy turvy tomato tomato thing, and I didn't water enough. So I got like one cherry tomato and a bunch of chives and cilantro, but it, you know it was fun, and then. When I got the house, we, we wanted tomatoes, so that's what started it. Plus, when you have kids, you, you won't have enough time. You know, you don't have time to do you know go out and do what you used to do. You're gonna be home, so gardening's great. You get a you get to get out in the sun and all that. That's why I started gardening. The Scyther mod, what's the minimum wattage you'd recommend for two tomato plants? LED, that is. Uh, well, the thing with tomatoes, and whether the tomatoes are not the questions the same, is like they'll grow big and monstrous. So unless you have a way to control the size of the plant, like to have a big, full-grown tomato plant, You could do it with 100 watts of LED, you know? You'd, you'd want reflective material around the sides. Uh, you always want more, but I think that'd be enough. K 
okay Ferrari 40 watts. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, it would grow. But, like, if you're going to make a big tomato plant with, with fruits, I think 100 would do it. I think that'd be the... I think that'd be the minimum. I think 40 would be like kind of like micro tomato kind of thing. Cola 8 says, have you considered growing habanero peppers or another species in the future? Yeah, I, I started a habanero pepper in a, in a video. It got buried by YouTube because the session was short. The session length. You can find it. It's called capsi capsicum in a cleaning closet or something like that that plant's still alive we'll probably we'll probably discover its fate soon but maybe not maybe it'll be a long-term thing gpu med have you ever grown stevia no i want to do that has anyone grown stevia who's grown stevia here i heard it's a challenge why would it be like is, is that a joke? Why would it be a challenge? Travis O'Hara, Jeb, do you know Kang? Do you mean Kang Star, the YouTube channel? Or do you mean someone else? I, I watched his videos back when I used to watch stuff. Ginger's a good idea. I started some ginger and we're, we're working on that one. Bluegill Bronco 2, I only grow radishes. Wow, that sounds spicy. Pascal says, I grew stevia and it, and it blew up in the growth. It was a gold thing. Yeah, I mean, see, it's a leafy plant, right? Like, why, why would it be hard? I don't, know why, I don't know why stevia would be a challenge, but I haven't done it. Could be. Donald Trump Jr., have you tried rat tail radish seed pods? No? Are the, is that spicy? Or like, what do you do with that? You just let a radish go to seed? I've let, I've, I've, you just let a plant go and you got seeds everywhere. So, man, my beer's empty. Norton Snail, ever grown wild medicine, not pot, like valerian root and stuff. No, I don't think anything I grow would count as wild medicine. I want to do dandelions at some point. So you, you could consider that medicine, I guess. I'm glow I'm growing blackberries right now. So you can make a tea from blackberry leaves, and I have no idea what it does to you, but it does something. Hopefully not kill you. Uh, I have an aloe vera. Yeah. Mita Skelids, sorry, I can't do your name. Skelidzija, do you follow Cody's lab? He makes a lot of gardening videos. I, I watched a few of them, but I, I don't have time to watch YouTube anymore. Um, but I, I, I enjoy Cody's lab videos. My videos, his videos require a lot more knowledge and skill, and mine take a lot longer to edit and are more annoying. Aiden Skeels, hey Jeb, do you like spider plants? Yeah, they're cool. Wow, you guys are chatting crazy. Audio books by Jeb. I don't know. Would how would that work? Like I've thought of recording. You know, I like reading Harry Potter to the kids. But I think I'd get flagged or sued or something if I read, read Harry Potter and put it on here. That'd be cool. How about Lord of the Rings? Is that out of is that out of copyright or they keep renewing it because of the movies? I think I'd just have to do it for free, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how it goes with books. Sounds like a lot of works. Okay, concentrated reviews, super chat. Dun dun dun. Thanks for all of it. Oh, should I, should I read it first? Okay. 
Thanks for all the videos, Jeb. You've inspired me to try comparative cannabis grow. Thank you, concentrated reviews. One with an airstone and one only crat key. Yeah, I've done a couple of those comparisons, and uh, the airstone ones do a little better. It depends on the setup. Like the one I did was in buckets. And when you have stacked buckets, you have really low surface area, really, really low uh, differential between the oxygen concentration and the water in the air because of low circulation. So um, good, good luck with your grow. I mean, you know, it's going to be the same effect as it is on any plant, probably for cannabis. It's just, be, be smaller with, with no air stone. Unless it's super hot, then I don't know. Then all bets are off. That's funny. I'm, I'm reading all these messages live, right? And then the super chat comes up and I'm like, should I read it first in case it's a troll message? It's funny. Okay, five gallon buckets under 450 watt. Is that a brand? Meiji? And I put the airstone in the smaller of the two plants. Okay. Five gallons seems kind of small for 450 watts. I mean, I know you need to lift the buckets, but do you have the, like a top off mechanism? I'm just going to pretend that you didn't tell me you're growing cannabis. I'm going to pretend it's peppers or something so I can enjoy the enjoy the engineering the engineering feats. Tyler Williams, how do you choose the soundtrack for your videos? Also, I would pay top dollar for Jeb audiobooks. Like, yeah, I could try to do a side job of, of the audiobooks, but imagine the time involved. Like would it would it to a no namer what what does it pay? Like how long would it take to read a book with the retakes and stuff? Unless I did it you know sloppy like I did, I don't see how it would work. Because the whole thing is is how much time you have. But I think you had another question, and then you're saying the audiobooks. I'm gonna look for your message. Oh yeah, choose the soundtrack. So I get all the footage and then I kind of catalog it and you, you get the mood. Like, what do we got? What do we got here? We got 12 to 16 minutes. You know, you can gauge how, how strong your video is. And then you get, you get a mood like, uh, like with the space bucket is going to be kind of mystical kind of, you know, because the the space buckets is, is was actually supposed to be a, an outreach video for people who haven't seen my channel before. So to those people, be it will probably be a lot more fantastical, you know, seeing the imagery with the purple lights and the crazy fans and you know all that all that cool stuff. So I wanted something futuristic ish, and then there's a lot of pressure to do longer videos, but if it can be good, then, you know, you can have real satisfying video if you make it longer. So then the, the duration of the video would affect which ones. And then I go searching, I have a playlist with ideas, but a lot of times I'll get something new because that's what you get excited about is the new thing you found. Sri Ram R says, Mr. Jeb, which is better for large scale crop growing? Which is better, hydroponics versus traditional farming? Well, better is an interesting word. Like, if it's raw economics and it's not, it's not the certain hydroponic plants that have become popular, I, I mean, for large scale production, like tomato, you know, greenhouse tomatoes, peppers raft lettuce i think people probably do some herbs i think that's like the main the main hydroponic production 
is, you know, greens, and then there's some tomato-ish nightshade fruiting crops. So for raw money, obviously, the, the farming has it right now. But then if you talk about, like, what's better, what's better, the the uh, the scorched earth farming that some people are doing where where you just you just pour the chemicals on the soil and then you just spray 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 like even if you don't care about the toxins it's it's you know and the and the you know use of petroleum and you know all that if you don't care about all that it just doesn't seem very efficient you know Like you, you pour on the stuff and then half of it goes to the, to the center of the earth or the water table or whatever. And it, it ends up in the river and it, and it poisons the, poisons the, you know, the ocean. Is that the, is that the best? I'm, I, I don't get too teary eyed about environmental things, but that seems real wasteful. I don't know about that. And then you got the organic, the organic, uh, there's different levels of organic-ish farming, but, you know, you can get real super, uh, I don't know the word. I'll have to think about it. You can get real super uh, devoted to, to, your, to your wishes, and then you can end up with something that doesn't, doesn't produce, given the landmass and stuff that it takes. I think hydroponics might be the solution. All right, who's got a good topic? So I'm going to put a good topic in there. See if I got anything good for the... Uh... Oh, yeah, someone said auto-watering for the for the trash can. Like, you, you could do that, but it'd be better to make it easier to access the plants, and, and then you wouldn't have to auto-water because you need to inspect regularly. So I'm, I'm not too worried about the auto-water. Auto-watering. Auto K Ferrari says Jeb rumor has it you're a flat earther. Yeah, don't waste time with that. That's just trolls. Here's the thing with the trolls is I I think unless you're a unless you're a content producer or moderator, unless you're a content producer that does their own comments or a, a moderator for a large channel, you, it's it's easy not to know what the trolls are up to. So yes. Most of the flat earther people are just trolling you, and you gotta you gotta let that go. Don't let people waste your time. Your time is your life. It's valuable. So with any of the trollish stuff, uh, just you just you just skip it. It's a waste. Like you know, there's some troll comments in here too. Uh, what am I gonna? I gotta click it and 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 scan it and tell YouTube about it. It's like just ignore the trolls. Someone says, "Are uh, Ricky Martin Whitey do a misting system for the roots vids?" Yeah, I want to do some aeroponics. Just all takes time. Three Team Alaska grow a chia pet. How would that be exciting? Is is it just because it's a it's a is it a clickbait thing? You make a chia pet and you like you know you would that be that interesting? Hey, one of those guys. Good to see you here. It's been around a long time. <laughs> Dave Zen, do you enjoy growing microgreens? Could you give me some tips? I'm trying to get started. So you all have seen every single microgreen grow that I've ever done, ever. So don't get advice from me. <laughs> so uh, I, would, I would look at some channels that actually know how to do consistent production of microgreens. But I do think this microgreens so make a bold prediction microgreens if they get any more popular they'll have to be hydroponic because all those tubs of soil 
for for two weeks, then you got to get a new tub of soil. It's way too wasteful. It's got to be hydroponics. Think, think about the screen. Grow the microgreens on a screen. You'll be happy. Hey, Christopher Cordasso. There's a dollar and no comment. All right, that's my favorite kind. All right, I have to look for Christopher. Christopher's comment. Do you recover the clay balls? Yeah, you mean the clay pebbles? Uh, I'm, I've done that a few times. I, I have. I have so little time to set anything up. I almost almost always grab new. Um, and then all the net cups are dirty, so you got to spray them with bleach. But it's another step, you know. Time, time slips away. I don't see why you couldn't redo the clay balls, even if some roots grew into them. Yeah, they'd be fine, as long as there's no plant pathogens in your system. Gillis Dubois, is there a way to prevent fungus from growing on plants? Why does it happen in hydroponic? It seems to happen to you a lot. Okay, so there's two funguses you could be talk you could be talking about. One are one are root hairs. They're not fungus. So in the big the big famous uh, psycho makes a salad or whatever video, it looked so much like fungus, but. I've seen it happen again consistently, a similar pattern, and those are root hairs. And what happens is if your humidity has to be high enough for them not to get air pruned. So in the salad video, that lid was crammed on and the rock holes were stuffed right through squares in the lid. So the, the humidity was really high. But I've seen it in other high humidity setups. So that fungus doesn't happen a lot because that isn't fungus, that's root hairs and that's... That's what plants do when roots are expo exposed to moist air. Some people say those are the air roots, too. I, I don't think it works like that. Don't, that doesn't, that's, doesn't make sense to me. The other kind of funguses are the stuff we usually see in the leaves, powdery mildew and that kind of thing. And I, I had a pumpkin get powdery mildew, and you, know, you hear this stuff about don't splash the leaves. Don't splash the dirt. Don't. There's all these knickknacks, uh, not knickknacks. There's all these 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 wives' tales or whatever about how to avoid fungus. And the the issue there is the cucurbits have uh, a water that collects under the leaves just from transpiration, and you'd have to use a product or you'd have to exclude exclude the uh, powdery mildew. The, the stuff is up in the air, the breeze is blowing, all the crap people say, and there it is, powdery mildew, because the, the wet leaf catches the, the spore and then it's in when the, when the environment's right. Okay. Is it, here's a good one, spoon 527. Is it possible to message you if we have questions pertaining to your channel or gardening? It's a great question. We could just write it right here, but there's a, there's a good chance I'll miss it. The best thing is to leave a comment because then uh, I, I have an email for business. But when you email me, it's just you and me talking, which might make you feel special. But when you make a comment, then you give me something valuable, right? You have a comment that everyone can see and participate in, but it hits the metrics on the channel. When you email me, that's just giving me work. You know, you have to accept that you, you are a stranger in the universe asking me for something. So give a little in return, right? Do it in a comment. And then, yeah, I read all the comments. It's the best way to do it. Or you, you get on Patreon and Patreon message me. <laughs> Mike Zagony, did I get it right? How did we do? Ever try a tomato and potato grafted plus Kratky? Now I've seen that. Uh, so 
people call it a cap ketchup and fries tomato and then so it'll be like a cherry tomato on top grafted onto a potato root and so then the thing will grow both both potatoes and ketchup both both tomatoes and potatoes in the same plant that sounds like fun for a goof uh the ones i've seen they don't get they don't really get big fabulous plants so it, it seems more like a like a like a fun thing to do not the future of nightshade production high score says you could post on the new jeb Gardner subreddit yeah, I'm just going to do YouTube. It's the same kind of thing, at least right now, is there's not enough time, you know, to do everything I want to do. So if I focus on the comments, I gain I gain something from the comments. I, I, I give a little value straight to the viewers by being in the comments, and then I get some value from the, from the machine god at Google. So... I'll pr you guys go make a reddit and 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 promote me <laughs> I don't have time Jeb YouTube gave me free super chats and I'm giving them to you because I like you oh thanks Christopher that's awesome how do you get how do you get free super chats is it like uh, when you give them the credit card for the first time they're like eh, here's a couple of super chats let's get you let's get you going Let's get you spending. Janice Carey. You must have got some free ones too, because I don't I don't see a message with it. But thank you, Janice. <laughs> Dylan Russell, hello Jeb. Hello, Jeb. You helped me pass my horticulture class, so thanks. Did I really help you? Like, what did I help you with? Having an interesting project or uh, hypnotizing the professor, like, I don't think it'd be from gardening knowledge. I'm curious about that. How, what, how did you, how did I actually help you pass it? Or are you just being friendly? Was never seen any room with 233 people in cheers. That's from Ray's Dorset allotment. Oh, that's cool. You got a channel raise. Anyone with allotment, it's like it's always like a British garden or some gardening channel. <laughs> um, well, I, I I did a I did a, a channel announcement like half an hour before. Figure give give people a chance to get on. You know, and it, it's fun to do a chat, but I I you know I had to do the security light because I agreed to it. I'm I'm uh, I'm late on their video. Don't tell them. I think I'm like five days late, but we're going for quality. Next video coming soon. Clay Gottschalk, my name Jeb. That's that's solid. It's a good it's a good comment. Thank you, Clay. <laughs> Austin just started my first garden, twenty foot by six foot plot. You've inspired me massively in this. Greetings from Canada. Oh, that's great. You do any hydroponics, Austin? Um. I think a, a hybrid, a hybrid setup is 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 can be really good. So you have your hydroponics for your your troubled plants, plants that have trouble with pests, and plants that you just want maximum output from, and a big few feeders or whatever. And then you you use your spent nutrients, you just pour them on your organic garden. The bacteria will eat it all up. You know, raised beds, containers, whatever. Rainwater or tap water is the difference worth worrying about. So I I I've heard the stuff about people worrying about chlorine in their tap water. I, it doesn't bother me a bit cuz I just that's all I use. But I have noticed when it rains the plants really like it. I think that might be more from the uh, 
it could be like bringing bringing air you know with the water into the soil assuming it doesn't flood out and there's probably scientific reasons i've heard people say there's there's a little bit of nitrate in rainwater from pollution or something i don't know about that no i wouldn't i wouldn't build your whole system where you have to have rainwater just use it if you can smiles hi jeb i'm in a big fan thanks for all the videos oh thanks smiles oh that's nice all right face meat gave me some 99 cents all right nice nice name face meat danny z ninja extra nitrogen absorption from the atmosphere yeah i've heard about that i i just noticed the plants go in you know they they grow really well right after it rains now here it doesn't rain a lot so you know it, it may be different it could just be they're getting underwatered in the heat and they get a break and then you get the big growth well you guys are so friendly with the super chats thank you thank you mark m is everyone getting free, how does that go is everyone getting freebies for uh you sign up for you sign up for youtube red and and they give you two free super chats how does that work Spalding 1250 chlorine and probably other impurities could affect pH and inhibit nutrient uptake. Yeah, but how much? That's the trick, right? Like, say your tap water comes out and it's 100 ppm and it's got some calcium and it's got some chlorine. It's going to work great. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know where it wouldn't work unless the pH is way off. I just, I don't see it. Dental, thank you. <laughs> Kevin from Chicago. I'm Polish American. What are you, Jeb? You like wood chips. Uh, so it's, you know, it's it's a mixture of Northern European. I, I don't know the exact mix, but you know, you can guess. Just, there you go. Now you know what I am. <laughs> Izzy Swan, really enjoy your style, brother. Keep it up. Well, thank you, Izzy. That's awesome. What uh, what kind of gardening do you do, Izzy? Some indoor stuff? All right, here this one looks like a good one. Marco, if you could gene edit any plant, what plant would you edit and what would you try to make? I would try and make a strawberry blue. I don't know. To, my, my first thought is I've got to pick some food crop and save the world. <clears throat> what... Uh, Okay, so here's an interesting one. What if you can gene edit a plant so that a food crop can grow on ocean water? Un, un, unpurified ocean water. How about that? Gene edit that plant. We'll, we'll, be, we'll all be very happy. Someone will be very rich. And with the gene thing, what's the deal? Like, okay... I'm not against the concept of GMO, but something seems rather unsavory about patenting a piece of genetic information. Like, I guess if you made the gene nylon, you know, to make uh, the enzyme nylonase, and then you're going to use that to decompose fab, you know, something weirdo thing. But if it's just a plant that you could grow and then the plant could reproduce... I think you you got you should make it where people can keep their seeds. It's like okay, you paid this big fee, and now if it's if it's hybrid seed, then why would you care? It's like good luck making your hybrid seeds, because guess what? Even people not using GMO, most people ain't storing their seeds. So why do you have to patent it and make it so people can't can't keep their genetic material? That seems silly. It's like. You know, say like the Roundup Ready stuff, and that might even be old hat these days. I don't, I don't keep track of it, but so you sell Roundup, you make money. You sell seeds made for Roundup, you make money, but that's not good enough. You have to make it so they can't keep the seeds from the seeds. Like, really? Come on now. <laughs> what are they going to like? What are they worried about? Someone's going to like, maybe you could. Yeah, anyways. 
It just seems like he gets a little too greedy there. The genetic material. Janice Carey. I'm going to try hydroponics in a bucket. Happy Leaf has a good video on it. Oh, that's cool. Did they use the little the little four watt light they have? Because that thing puts out the light. Just saying. I need hydroponic beans, dude. Thank you, random user. I don't know. I mean, it's on the list, but is that really what you want? Hydroponic beans? Is that because it, you need a food crop? Do potatoes. Uh, I've got sweet potatoes back here. Let's see if we can freak the camera out. We're getting to the end. we got to have you guys see my sweet potatoes. So here's the thing, right? Oh, it's all washed out. Okay. Get rid of that. Check that out. So here's the uh, here's the traditional way. Oof. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think that's the traditional way. Uh, I use the bamboo skewers because what am I going to use a toothpick? Are you kidding? But look how little the look how slow the growth is. Now I know that this is. I don't know. You could have the smaller potato or whatever. I don't think you can see. But okay, there's not big growth on this. There's lots of roots, but not a lot of slips. Let's see if we can do this. Do we dare? We do. What about this? Now, this costs more than a jar to set up. The slips back here, That's the slip is just a copy of the plant, right? These cuttings. These all came off this thing. This got planted the same time as that. As that. Okay. And it's growing under. Okay, there's all these roots. And there's plants growing under the screen. So, okay, just more proof, everyone. Plants on a screen. That's the future of, of humankind. Does someone have a better way to start sweet potatoes? Someone experienced uh, experienced gardeners. So that would be your food crop. I mean, I haven't done it yet, but I I don't know. I think it might do well in hydroponics. It's just a guess. Was that the reason for the beans? Like, that is a question that people kind of come up with with the hydroponics. They're like, well, can you grow calories? Yeah, you can, you can do it. Rob Roy says, what if you mix hydroponics techniques with traditional soil guarding like 50-50 hydro soil mixture? Well, you wouldn't do it in the same bucket. Okay, like you can, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a soil uh, hydroponic hybrid. There could be more than one, but the one I've heard of is the uh, mint lighter gardening method. And basically, they'll have a, okay, I don't know, I'm not that familiar with it. So when I screw up, forgive me, but they'll use a sand bed. They can use sawdust. They could, you know, you could do it in dirt but you might cut it with sand or something to, to keep air in it and then they'll pour the hydroponic nutrients they'll call it like the daily feed or the weekly feed or something it's just a big bucket of hydroponic nutrients they'll pour that on once a week just you know right on the soil but you know soil hydroponic uh, hybrid could just be industrial agriculture where you pour the you dump the this fertilizer if you're not using you know really slow release you, you you put the pellets on the soil you test the dirt you add the the fertilizer you're basically just making hydroponics and using using the dirt as a medium that that's probably not the ideal way that's what you're talking about 
Okay. Casey Tremaine, have you grown an avocado like the sweet potato? You mean with the sticks and stuff? No, but I could do that at some point. Okay, we're 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 running up to the end mark. Anyone got some some super super exciting comments? One of those guys wants to know about aqua aquaponics. Yeah, I like it, but I don't like experimenting on fish, so I'll do that when I have lots of time and skill. But I've also noticed sometimes the aquaponic plants just don't look, you know, lush and vibrant and fabulous. They're kind of oh, it's a little yellow, a little undersized, but yay, it's fish. You know what I mean? So I like the, I like the idea, but I don't know. I don't know if it's there yet. I'm sure some people have some super perfect setups, but. Many of the ones I've seen, the plants, they just, they don't look that happy. I think it's David Horning. <laughs> wow. The comments are flying. Benjamin Franklin says, ask Cody's lab about aquaponics. Is it, does he get mad? Is that like a troll thing? Or does he have some big, uh, some big opinion that, that angers people? What, why, what is the deal there? Travis O'Hara says, Jeb, Cody's Lab, Joe Rogan, and Jesse Lee Peterson. Jesse Lee Peterson. Is that like code? Did you have to hide? Did you have to hide someone's name? I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Cody's, yeah, Cody's Lab's awesome. I'd be nice to get shouted out by a big channel like that or whatever, but I don't know that that makes... Like, my one video went wild because I got shouted out and I got put on trending. Um, was it two years ago? It was a while back. The ignores the laws of nature video. It's got 9 million views. So it got its start from getting shouted out, but then the, the, the machine monster takes over and it knows, it knows what people want. So just make things that our computer masters want and, and uh, you can have lots of views. Cody is growing plants in a water tank. Is this all the Cody? Is this all the Cody fans promoting him in my chat? How dare you? I'm not angry. I'm just pretending. Mini Stone says, "Do you use ladybugs?" Yeah, I released some, but the the climate's not. I don't think it's good for him here, so I'm, I, I may not do that anymore. And uh, we have, uh, it's, yeah, I think we have other predators that do better in the, in the dry climate. I, I'd have to do more research. Metaskeletia. <laughs> no, we want to promote Jeb. Ah, it's fun. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Yeah, I, I'm sure Cody's real busy and... You know the thing with the shout outs is you don't really have to pester other 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 pr uh, producers to shout me out. I, it's just I'm lazy and I haven't shouted them out. So it's just you just shout them out and if you're good enough then they'll shout you out back. <laughs> All right, we're getting close to the end. Who's got who's got the closing question? Ooh, here's a good one. Tiago Lesti, have you tried wasps? There are hundreds of, of uh, I think you mean varieties for eating pests. There are some wasps, but the stinging ones? Okay, so here's the thing for wasps. Don't hate me too much, but I'm frightened of bees, and I got, you know, kids and animals and myself. So one wasp is a, is a beauty of nature. A, a paper wasp is what we're talking about, uh, or, a, or a mud wasp. The kind that can sting you good. Okay, those are amazing. Wonders of nature. One of them just need to, and then you you have one you need to keep your eye out for. Well, there's a wasp over there. Okay, take a break over here. But if more than one wasp shows up, 
it uh, it disappears. I make it disappear. Because, <laughs> I mean, I have to be in my yard, man. This is my yard. I don't go in their nest and smash them. But anyways, only one wasp per Jeb's yard at a time. Forgive me. All right, we hit the one-hour mark. Thank you all for coming. That's great. Thank you so much. And the super chats were great. We'll hope to see you next time. And don't forget the uh, the security light. We'll have a link. I think I already have the link in the description. Check that out. Thanks for watching.